Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our playlist on bleeding and coagulation disorders. In previous videos, we have talked about typical HUS and TTP. Today, it's atypical HUS. With that said, now let's get started. As you know, hemolytic uremic syndrome is divided into atypical and typical, but TTP is divided into inherited and acquired. Let's start with hemolytic uremic syndrome. We have atypical HUS. This happens in adults and it has no diarrhea. Contrast that with typical HUS it happens in children and it is associated with diarrhea. In the good old days, this was known as diarrhea positive HUS and this was called diarrhea negative HUS. But now they are atypical and typical. There is another classification. It calls this primary HUS and this one secondary HUS because it's secondary to the E. coli 0157H7. The mnemonic is typical is for the teeny tiny children, but atypical is for adults. TTP is inherited and acquired. Inherited is extremely rare. There is a genetic deficiency of the ADAMTS13. This is an absolute deficiency. Acquired, the enzyme amount is fine, but we have an inhibitor against the ADAMTS13 enzyme. This will lead to decreased activity of ADAMTS13. In either case, inherited or acquired, the plasma enzyme activity of ADAMTS13 is usually less than 10%. We have talked about the difference between hemolytic uremic syndrome and TTP in previous videos. In a nutshell, hemolytic uremic syndrome, E. coli 0157H7, this is the diarrhea positive HUS. This is the typical HUS. We have a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. However, TTP, we have no bloody diarrhea, no E. coli 0157H7, and we have a pentad, not a triad. The pentad is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure, same three, plus fever and neurological symptoms. Please note that renal failure is very rare in TTP, but it is common in HUS. We have talked about typical HUS in detail in my previous video in my bleeding and coagulation playlist, so please watch it. And we have talked about TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Remember the ADAMTS13. Remember that TTP is a freaking emergency that requires emergency plasma pharesis or plasma exchange, but HUS is not an emergency. It's usually a self-limited disease. And we had another video comparing between typical HUS and TTP. This was typical HUS, but today's topic is atypical HUS. So typical HUS, please remember the E. coli 0157H7. This is the Shiga-like toxin of the interhemorrhagic E. coli. We call this STEC, S-T-E-C. S is for Shiga-like. T is toxin, E, C is E. coli. How did we manage typical HUS supportive care? Remember that HUS is a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. Please don't forget the bloody diarrhea. This was typical HUS. Why bloody diarrhea in typical? Because of the E. coli 0157H7. It's an enterohemorrhagic E. coli or EHEC. It's also known as STEC because it's Shiga-like toxin producing E. coli. TTP, on the other hand, was a freaking pentad, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. But remember, acute renal failure is rare in TTP. And we have talked about this pycmonic of hemolytic uremic syndrome. We had a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombone, cytopenia, and renal failure. The treatment was supportive with fluids and electrolytes, and if it's severe, dialysis. TTP, on the other hand, we had a problem with Adam TS13, and we had a pentad, five symptoms. What are they? Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, beaver, and neurological symptoms. These two slides were from Picmonic. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. You can sign up for free to help support my channel. Thank you. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, we have atypical or diarrhea negative and typical or diarrhea positive. TTP versus atypical HUS. TTP, the defect is an ADAMTS13. Serum ADAMTS13 enzyme activity is less than 10%. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. Please remember that renal failure is rare. How about atypical HUS? Actually, atypical HUS is very freaking similar to TTP. However, here the defect is not in ADAMTS13, it's in the complement regulation. Sometimes we have a complement defect, other times we have antibodies. And as you know, when the complement is hyperactive, it destroys everything. 
How about the serum ADMTS13 enzyme activity? In case of atypical HES, it's actually normal. It's usually more than 10%, unlike the TTP. That's a big difference. What is the pentad? Same pentad, microangiopathic, chromatogenemia, thrombocytopenia, acute fever, fever, and resistance. However, renal failure is way, 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 way more common in HUS, the atypical, than in TTP. Also, neurological symptoms is less common in AHUS than it is in TTP. So, in a nutshell, TTP, renal failure, less common, neurological symptoms, more common. About atypical HES, renal failure, way more common, but neurological symptoms almost non-existent. How do we manage atypical HES? First, since atypical HES is defect in the complement regulation, therefore, the treatment is a terminal complement inhibitor. If the complement is hyperactive and you have the MAC, which will attack everything, you can inhibit the complement by giving a colizumab. We have talked about this before, if you remember. If you remember my previous video in my hematology playlist, the video is called Paroxysmal Nocturnal Hemoglobinuria. Here you had overactive karate complement attacking your red blood cells into intravascular hemolysis. How did we treat this disease? One of the treatment options were to actually inhibit the terminal complement, to inhibit the MAC, which will attack the red blood cells. How do we inhibit the complement? Using a colizumab. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Some pearls for the pros about ecolizumab. What's the mechanism of action? First, it's, the name has the answer. MAB is a monoclonal antibody. ZU because it's humanized. We have three types of monoclonal antibodies. Number one, we have the humanized. It will have ZU. Next, we have the human. And the human one will have just the U without the Z. How about the third type? The third type is actually called chimeric and it has XI, such as the famous rituximab. Cool, so ecolizumab has ZU, so it's a humanized monoclonal antibody. Against what? Against the terminal complement proteins. Okay, so it's good for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria because the complement is hyperactive SOB, destroying all of our red blood cells. This drug is also useful for atypical HES because the complement is an SOB, hyperactive, destroying everything, leading to the famous pentad. Please don't forget that acute renal failure is actually common. How about a side effect of this drug? There is an increased risk of fulminant meningococcal infections. Ooh. How do I prevent it? Vaccinate against Neisseria meningitis before you prescribe the freaking medicine. There is a new classification for HES. We divide it into primary HES and secondary HES. Secondary is secondary to a known cause, such as the E. coli 0157H7. That's a freaking known cause. That's why it's secondary. It's like primary osteoarthritis and secondary osteoarthritis. Primary hypertension, unknown cause. Secondary hypertension, known cause. Other known causes include streptomyo big time, especially in children, it's really, really bad. HIV, autoimmune, when in doubt, say lupus. Drugs such as immunosuppressants. Primary causes, this is the diarrhea negative HES. This is the diarrhea positive, this is the diarrhea negative. Diarrhea negative or atypical HES or primary HES, we could have it due to a complement G mutation or antibodies to complement factor H. Cool, what's the treatment? Echolizumab, it's an antibody against the terminal complement proteins. Or immunosuppressants, yeah, if you're secreting antibodies, you can give an immunosuppressant to actually inhibit the secretion of the antibodies. This is just common sense, y'all. Here is a very difficult question. In cases of TTP, why did we use cryosupernatant to treat TTP, and we did not use cryoprecipitate. Ooh, please let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can get my premium courses here. You can support me here or here. Go to Picmonic here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.